Welcome to Paul's Toolbox. I want to run something past you. I have a, a friend of mine, Chris Barry, the Idaho painter, who really has some excellent videos. Uh, this guy knows a lot about painting. I've been in the construction business for a long time, and I've seen guys that are good and some that are not so good. This guy's one of your top ones. He's got some great points, great tips, and I think you'll enjoy it. I would suggest subscribing to his channel. I'll see you very soon because I'm working on another project right now. I was sick last week and uh, I'll have that out in a few days. This is Chris, the Idaho Painter. Glad to be here on Paul's Toolbox to give all Paul's viewers 10 tools that every do-it-yourself painter or professional painter should have in their toolbox. So stay tuned for this video. So item number one, this is kind of a simple tool, but this is a tool that I actually always have in my pot, pot pocket when I'm actually painting and this is a painter's five-in-one tool and it's called a five-in-one tool because this actually tool does five different things and it, this curved portion of it right here this portion actually is used to scrape the excess paint out of your roller so that's one thing that sinks out it actually acts as a acts as a scraper we use it a lot on exterior um, painting doing scraping this actually acts as a putty knife you could actually apply putty acts as a screwdriver on the end it acts as a pointed scraper there we use it a lot all of our cans we're opening our cans of paint with this five-in-one tool it makes opening a gallon of paint really easy but the painters five-in-one tool is a very key tool to have as a painter so the next item we're going to get into if we're working painting in a bedroom we're going to be doing our ceiling cut-ins i'm going to start off with just a simple bucket and every painter should actually have a cut-in bucket i use like a two gallon bucket with a one gallon grid inside this thing and you never actually want to paint out of the gallon of paint itself it's, it's um it's it can actually tip over a lot easier the base on these things are a lot more sturdier you're going to load in just about um, not quite a half a gallon of paint in here so the center of weight is lower to the ground and it won't tip and it's a lot easier it's got a bigger opening in it to actually work out of and do your cut ends and do your rolling out of so you got to have a two gallon bucket and what actually goes in the bucket is my four inch nap and I like this four inch roller with a 3 8 inch nap on this for doing all my cut-ins and trim work around the interior you know of a house or we actually use them on the exteriors too so this is a great item for interior and exterior if you get one that's really cheap when you're rolling this wire frame will actually bend and then it'll give you what we call your know, lap marks and trailing edges but this one I think is just five bucks for this I actually the the roller cover that goes on it it's a 3 8 inch nap is the most common one we use and I actually really like the pretty white woven white dove naps those things are splattered least little the least amount that any nap or roller that I've ever used before and they actually lay out the paint very well leave a nice finish to them so it's these this is what it actually looks like this is a um, a four inch pretty white woven nap right there so to finish off my cut-in bucket with the next item we're going to talk about a paintbrush and this paintbrush right here this is the most versatile paintbrush that we actually use and we have our vans are loaded with this thing and it's a 3 8 three inch angled sash brush and I actually like the pretty brush this is a pretty clear cut brush it's my favorite brush for doing interior painting and it, it gives me the straightest lines the best cut-ins that I've actually um, ever done with a paintbrush before is with this brush but really the, the key thing not everybody has access to the same brand names of paintbrushes there's a lot of good ones out there Wooster makes a good brush Corona makes a good brush but this one the key thing is the three inch brush it's going to cover a wider area your cut-ins and fill-ins um, will go a lot farther but in versus just a narrower brush this is the most versatile one I like an angled sash one because it gets up into the corners a lot easier versus just a flat brush but a three inch angled sash brush is how um, I finish off my cutting bucket and now we'll go on to the next item now you got to have something to roll your walls and the next item we'll talk about is a roller frame and cover right here the roller frame you definitely want to purchase a really good roller frame this is a contractor roller frame right here and the reason why you don't want to buy cheap ones is when you're rolling your wall this a cheap frame this will actually flex a lot and if it flexes and bends you can't put enough pressure 
on the roller itself to really get the paint down into the texture of the wall and then it will actually leave trailing edges or lap marks because when you're putting the pressure on the roller, it'll bend and flex and it'll put more pressure on this end, which will leave a, like a little heavy edge. And so you always want to invest in you know, the best nine inch roller frame that you can get. But this is of essential tool, the nine inch roller. Now we'll go on to the next item, which is the pan that goes along with this roller. And what I do see a lot of do-it-yourselfers uh, do is purchase those really small pans that hardly hold any paint. This is a one gallon pan. This is the pan that you should actually buy. This is a one, a one gallon metal pan. And we actually typically put a liner in these pans, which is, real, which is really cheap, like 50 cents. So you don't have to just keep building up paint in the thing or cleaning it. You just pull out the liner, toss them. But we actually just leave the liners in them, let them dry, and then reuse them. And eventually when the, the liners get so heavy with paint, we just throw them away. But you should be purchasing a metal pan that's a one gallon pan to go along with your nine inch roller. So I believe we're on to item number six, and that is a caulking gun. So I got my cutting bucket you know, set up. I got my uh, roller and pan set up. I'm gonna get, begin my painting, but I'm gonna be, begin masking. In order to do clean cut-in lines on the interior, you're always gonna, or we always actually caulk our tape and do a method of uh, using frog tape and clear caulking to get really laser straight lines. But we're using caulking guns. If you've got any cracks around any of your trim, you gotta caulk. If you've got um, doing on the exterior of a house, there's a lot of caulking on the exterior. But the caulking gun is a very versatile item. But I just use these, I think I pay, you know, five or six dollars for this style caulking gun right here. You can spend up to, I think, $20 for a caulking gun that's, you know, got nice rubber handles with grips and stuff like that. But this is the one I like. You gotta have a caulking gun, so make sure that's on your list of, list of items to purchase. Now I'll move on to another very essential item to use and that's a drop cloth and I know a lot of do-it-yourselfers you can just grab a old sheet in your house or um, anything else a blanket to cover stuff up but if you the difference between just say an old sheet and a drop cloth these things are meant to have paint spilt on them and absorb the paint and and not have it actually go all the way through the drop cloth into your floor whatever you're trying to protect a sheet is very thin and if you spill paint on it it's going to go right through that sheet like really fast it definitely will help with just small splatters and stuff but you definitely you should invest in a drop cloth this is what your pan should actually set on that you're actually rolling out of or if you ever set your cut in bucket down or your gallon of paint set it on a, a drop cloth and the most uh, versatile drop cloth to get is a 9 by 12 or we actually like the 4 by 15 runners but this drop cloth right here this is probably the one if I had one drop cloth to purchase this would be the one and if I don't know if you can see the little there's all these little black dots on here but they're little uh, pieces of rubber and this thing on the back side of it has those black dots and then on the other side it's just canvas and those black dots are non-slip so you can set this this drop cloth on say a tile floor a hardwood floor set a ladder on it and the ladder won't slide and that's important if you're using an extension ladder on your drop cloth that the extension ladder won't slide on a slick surface so it's very important that's a drop cloth I think uh, it's a 3m drop cloth we just purchased purchase from our local paint store. I think that drop cloth runs about $15. Very important to have is a drop cloth in your arsenal of tools. Another one of the best investments you can make in painting that is having an extension pole. And there's a lot of different size extension poles you can buy and in different ones, different ways they lock and release. But I like the ones with this lever right here. This is you know, a really convenient extension pole to use. This is a four to eight foot extension pole. And if I had only one I can buy, which I've got every size imaginable, and I have probably four of each one of them. But if I can only have one extension pole, I'd buy this one, which is four feet, and then it extends out to eight feet. It's gonna make your painting a lot faster and just gonna save your knees, save your back. It just makes the painting a lot more enjoyable. And a lot of people just overlook this, but this is a tool. I think this, uh, this extension pole right here is approximately about a $20 extension pole. Once again, this is gonna last you a lifetime. So now I'm on to the last item, item number 10. And things came out with a, lot, a long time ago, and it's a hand masker. And this thing actually, 
takes a roll of tape and it actually applies the tape onto paper or plastic so you can mask really fast. It's something that every painter, every professional painter obviously has to have one of these things. If you're spraying, it makes your masking so much faster, but even if you're just rolling walls, it just run around your walls, tack the stuff you know, all around your baseboards so you don't get splatter on your carpet before you lay your drop cloth down. It's, it just makes the painting process a lot easier. It, it makes uh, less liability of getting stuff on your carpets, on your floors. We run, just take, just pull the stuff off, just tack it to the windows so it sits on the windowsills and we're just using it for just all kinds of stuff. This is a tool that every single do-it-yourselfer or every single professional painter must have. It's gonna make your painting a lot faster, a lot more efficient, and if you're a professional, you're just gonna make more money in the long run. So there you have it, 10 tools that every professional painter or do-it-yourself painter should have in their toolbox. If you haven't subscribed to Paul's channel, Paul's Toolbox, please consider subscribing to his channel. If you want more tips and tricks on painting, come check out my channel, The Idaho Painter, and hopefully we'll see you back here on Paul's channel or over on my, or over on my channel, The Idaho Painter.